Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, so I'm Nick, and um, I'm very happy to be here. It's, uh, it's, it's an unusual environment for me. I, as, as the um, chair mentioned, I, I work at the university, but I work in kind of very industry-focused, um, in, in a very industry-focused research area. So I'm happy to, very happy to engage with, with, with crowds like this. Okay, so um, as, as users of internet-connected technology, we have increasingly come to expect that systems are uh, cheaper, that they're easier to use, that they're more flexible to use, right? Indeed, that they're always on, right? They're always available. And we base our businesses and we base our lives on systems that are presented to us as if they are always going to be available. And as we know, behind these systems, there is a complex infrastructure, um, some of which is more brittle than others. And we might be switching into a phase of our lives where maybe some of the things that we assumed to be ever present might, might not be, right? Where, where there, there might be disruption in availability. So the, this kind of motivated thoughts along this research direction about, um, um, about reacting to how this um, um, assumption were to be undermined, you know, how, how to design systems that are more resilient to that. And even if it is not undermined, um, what energy savings and what cost savings can be achieved by revisiting that same assumption? So the types of um, effects that I'm talking about are kind of big picture macro level effects, right? So the sensitivity we have to unreliable or costly resources because of climate change, right? Affecting the type of systems that down the line we depend on for a variety of services. Um, and also, you know, macroeconomic and geopolitical tensions and complications that affect the availability of, of devices, or at least the timely availability of devices that up to, you know, relatively recently we have come to expect. So let me, let me expand on that, and I, I will then talk about how the, this, this idea is being tackled uh, as a research project, how it is feeding into teaching, and also how it connects to some earlier uh, talks that were given today. So I'm focusing on, on, on data centers and there has been a certain, certain pattern to the outages that we have experienced when it comes to data centers, right? So um, oftentimes it is misconfiguration that cascades on and from a small problem it, it, it affects other systems that are interdependent um, and that leads to very visible outcomes. Um, sometimes it is equipment failure because um, you know, thing, devices have a certain lifetime or certain operating conditions and, and beyond that, um, they, 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 they fail. Um, occasionally it is something more catastrophic as a fire that takes out devices that were not due to fail, but um, the, um, the, 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 the environment destroyed the devices and the data. And increasingly in the last few years, our attention has been drawn to crime that has had a very disproportionate footprint, right? So I'm thinking of ransomware and, you know, some years ago it took out the health system in the UK and, and in various parts of the world we've seen various businesses and, and branches of government that have been affected by this, right? Leading to outages and leading to that lack of availability that I mentioned at the very start, right? That availability that we have come to expect, living in the on, always on world. So coupled with that, there seems to be new things that are capturing our attention when talking about kind of big picture uh, failures, right? So um, extremes in weather, both um, when it comes to drought, um, leading to w water levels going down, leading to uh, consequences for, for cooling, and at the other extreme, flooding. Um, conflicts and instability spilling over um, and affecting services either uh, accidentally or in, in some cases deliberately when cyberspace is considered in some cases to be a domain of war. 
Um, and laterally, the increased cost of energy and resources, right? And, and this, as, as we're, we're all aware, kind of this kind of dominoes and, and affects the, um, the, the cost of um, the, the downstream products and services. So this led to, to, the, to the question about how to design paradigms and technical interfaces that help users navigate uncertainty of availability. Now, I gather that most people in this room are engineers. So we are trained to think about what assumptions can be made, what operating envelope we can operate in. Um, but when we operate and interface with, with you know, apps and, and other devices as end users, we usually don't get the data sheet, right? We, we usually have uh, certain assumptions that we bring in about the, the inertia that I mentioned initially, right? The always onness. So what this research is about is how to revisit that and how to re represent um, interfaces to users so they can navigate uncertainty, especially when it comes to assumptions of availability. So the idea here is to replace the useful fiction of always on with um, a, a timetabled interface. Because always on is indeed a useful fiction, right? And, and it, is, it is a fiction nonetheless. Um, so the, the idea is then kind of connecting to what the chair mentioned earlier, perhaps, about um, you know, uh, policy and, and, and you know, social, social political interfaces, kind of having uh, an interface that um, is variable, that invo in, involves either forecasts or, or bidding on, on the use of certain resources. And this is a way to nudge users to explicitly plan for failure, right? It goes back to that adage that if you fail to plan, then you plan to fail, right? So, so this is, in a way, kind of integrating that, that forethought into the process. Um, I'm not going to un unpack the nitty-gritty of this um, dur during this talk. I'm very happy to go into more detail afterwards um, in, 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 when there's more time. But basically, at the core of this, there, it, there is, uh, it involves uh, modeling. So it connects, for example, to uh, the earlier talk by Sami uh, about telemetry and building models that can be used predictively and using those models uh, within an automated reasoning framework. So this involves, this is at, at its heart kind of sim symbolic AI where you um, formalize a type of reasoning that goes into making decisions under, under uncertainty. The, then the idea is that users or, or their agents would provide uh, preferences, objectives, and, and, and make use of, of models. And this can be rerun in order to um, reestablish re their, their choices. So reducing this to, to um, a kind of a very simple uh, presentation, what we see is basically a, a, a priority list. And there is an, a somewhat explicit relationship between outputs and the resources that are needed in order to achieve those outputs. When the resources become more scarce and become more expensive, or just when, you know, when, when some, some suddenly they, they not only become scarce, but just become extremely scarce as an unavailable, then the user through their agent would be better positioned to react to that and maybe decide what to shed. Um, so again, this, this kind of connects with um, a talk given earlier about uh, computing closer to the data, right? So the models I'm talking about here um, indeed capture uh, memory and processing resources and their proximity and takes into account you know, moving costs and latencies. Um, and there, I'll, I'll give a couple of links to papers that expand more on this, but I'm happy to, to talk more about this offline. So this is being prototyped in a, in a uni uh, cluster. Um, you know, they, they, they say kind of eat your own dog food. Um, and I'll talk a bit about the type of use cases that uh, we, we, we look at. But the, the main thing to take away from this, it's, it's about dealing with change, right? And, and having change as a first order concern rather than, than assuming that, you know, the, that there is going to be a service interface and, and change will be de dealt with um, later um, in an ad hoc way. So changing in you know, user and task density, resource, the value of resources, the availability of resources, the types of resources as, as first order concerns. 
So based on the use cases we're looking at, um, what we have is um, you know, things that you often can plan ahead for, right? There, there are some things that will take you by surprise, but many things you can typically plan ahead for. You know, there's deadlines uh, to do with papers. Uh, you know when new equipment is scheduled to come uh, and it might be delayed, so that will offset other things that are dependent on it. You know when planned maintenance is gonna happen. You know that the, the group size isn't suddenly going to double, right? Um, it, is, it is going to scale up more, more gradually and you would have kind of lead time and you can plan ahead for that. So the, the model kind of incorporates the sort of uh, inertia that real life imposes on, on those sort of changes. So I also see uh, kind of benefits for, for the wider OCP community to do with the resilience of systems under, um, under uncertainty, improved efficiency and reduced waste because of this more frugal uh, approach to, to resource utilization. And indeed, utilization of disaggregated systems, which, which, indeed, which is what, something that um, occupies our, our, kind of our, our focus quite a bit these days and is central to the type of modeling being done here. Um, so if you'd like to find out more, I encourage you to uh, look up these papers where you know, this, the, the ideas of you know, heterogeneity and distribution and disaggregation are, are, are explored in some detail, talks about the reasoning framework, uh, talks about examples. Um, and I'm just going to wrap up here, but um, I'd be very happy to take questions. My, my poster is just outside. And if we don't get to talk at this event, feel free to reach out to me uh, through that link. Thank you.